now that we have all our all that fun stuff out of the way, um, this video is gonna suck. Yeah, let's. Uh, <clears throat> Zach Zach doesn't even want to do it. Let's review some <clears throat> raw because this is the asshole rundown. And this is the asshole review. No, this is the raw asshole. <laughs> All right. That's terrible. And I we're don't off, want it to be. <laughs> we're off to a good start. Uh, well, Monday Night Raw was better than last week. Uh, we opened up but with... But, let's be honest, that's not hard to do. A raw asshole is better than last week. <laughs> last yeah. week's Raw was one of the critic, like the most critically panned Monday Night Raws yeah, I, like in here's history. Here's the thing. Like, we watched it, and I didn't feel like it was that bad. Like, I was like, okay, it was a, it was a crappy Raw. There was a lot of bad things in it, but I didn't think it was that bad. And then I just saw the internet explode in a backlash to uh, last week's Raw. I thought it was better than the week before. I don't even remember what happened the week before. Yeah, that might be why I think it was better. Anyway. <clears throat> um, I think the backlash might be just that that wasn't necessarily the worst Raw ever, but it was kind of the breaking point. That's yeah. I mean, it's been lacking. But anyway, we'll talk about this week where we were supposed to open up with a women's tag team match. It's supposed to be Ronda and Natty versus Nia and Tamina. But instead, we got the destruction of Ronda and Natty at the hands of Nia, uh, Tamina, and the Riot Squad. Uh, Ronda got beat down. Natty got put through a table. Terrible situation. We then had an open forum once again with Sasha and Bailey. This one went a little bit better than last week. Um. Alexa was kind of like doing things the way that it's supposed to happen, but then we had Dana, Alicia, and Mickey all try and get involved. Alexa said, "No, let's have a match yeah. instead." And so Sasha and Bailey defeated Alicia Fox and Mickey James. Uh, Alexa tried to calm Ronda down and said, "Hey, you can still have your tag team match." And Ronda's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go find myself a partner because fuck you." She didn't say "fuck you," but essentially, <laughs> Alexa's like, "I'll find you a partner." She's like, "No, I don't trust you. I'll go find my own." Uh, then we had a Baron Corbin campaign ad, and that went into uh, Corbin making what seemed like a, uh, a, a almost baby phase move where he gave Rude a match against Drake Maverick, and if Rude won, then him and Gable would get a tag team title shot. And no one was allowed at ringside. Yeah. Authors of Pain and Chad Gable were not allowed at ringside. Uh, as, but as that, we know, in wrestling, that always sticks. Oh, always. But then we had, once again, Lucha House Party rules. This time it was a three-on-one handicap match where the yeah. Lucha House Party defeated Scott Dawson. Yeah, get out of here, Lucha House Party. <clears throat> then we had Drew McIntyre Appreciation Night, which turned Where's into... Seth Rollins when you need him? Uh, he's, he's later on. I know, but <clears throat> like I want him to come and burn it down. Soon. Just burn uh, the Lucha House Party. Yeah, Drew McIntyre Appreciation Night turned into... Uh, a lot of Baron Corbin gargling the balls of Drew McIntyre and Dolph going, you know, I helped. Yeah, Dolph and Drew broke up. Yeah. And then and then Dolph kind of won. Really? Yeah. Yep. Dolph won because <clears throat> Drew's with uh, his new sugar daddy, Baron Corbin, but uh, Dolph has a Finn Balor boy toy now. So Finn Balor was Batman tonight. Yeah. He was just, he was helping people left and right, uh, including our next segment where Elias... Uh, with the help of Finn Balor, was able to get a little bit of revenge on Leo Rush. Uh, didn't get uh, didn't get to do as much to Bobby Trashley as he wanted to, but he did break his guitar across across Leo Rush's back. We then had uh, Jinder tell Corbin, "Hey, I will uh, I'll help you with your Finn Balor problem." And Corbin's like, "Cool, we'll do that." Uh, and then both Slater and Rhino were on the chopping block, and there was only room for one of them on Monday Night Raw, so they had to fight each other for that final spot. Uh, then the Drake Maverick versus Bobby Roode match turned into Drake Maverick and the Authors of Pain defeating Bobby Roode and Chad Gable after an attack in the back and just all kinds of shenanigans. You know, I want to make special mention of the brief moment in that match that was brilliant wrestling psychology distilled to just one moment and that's when the AOP was running out and Bobby Roode was trying to pin Drake Maverick Yes, and the crowd was so into it in that moment yeah cause they're like oh he just hit him with his finisher this, this could win but it didn't uh, then uh, if Finn Balor was Batman Dean Ambrose was Bane came out with an entire SWAT team uh, in gas masks and uh, uh, a siren over his music uh, which I actually thought was kind of cool um, and then went on the whole 
people suck because they like Seth Rollins bit and blah blah blah. Uh, and Seth Rollins came out and Seth Rollins failed again. Uh, then Slater defeated Rhino and good for you, Heath Slater. You're a referee now. <clears throat> Finn Balor then defeated uh, Jinder Mahal. He was then uh, talking to Charlie in the back and was attacked by Drew McIntyre. And then in the main event, Ronda and her new partner, Ember Moon, defeated Nia Jax and Tamina. Yep. All right. Well, with that being said, I'm going to go to you first. What did you like about Raw? Uh, not as much as I could. Well, that's that's most weeks. Um, no, I'm going to go to uh, Heath Slater winning a match on TV. That's that's a like. I guess that's a silver lining. Yeah. That's all you got? That's, well, yes, for a like. That's a like. Yeah. All, all right, moving it's cause, on. It's because I just I want a rhino with that mustache to go away. Yeah, the, mu- the weird yeah, mustache. Yeah, I don't know. Well, he usually always has like that kind of like split goatee thing going on. Yeah, but I mean, this is just mustache. Do you not have a little? I don't think so, no. Huh. It's just big sideburns and a mustache. Is Wolverine mutton chops. Not quite Wolverine mutton chops. Anyway, what did you like about Raw? I liked... mm, (laughs) That same moment in the Bobby Roode versus Drake Maverick thing. Um, Yeah, that was was a good moment. But anyway, you have a different one? Uh, I thought I had a different one, but I realized I'm going to use that for my love. So I liked Finn Balor doing cool stuff. Yeah, Finn Balor... Kind of just just fucking with all the heels. Yeah, just can't, getting some revenge after all the shit that they went through last week. He got some good TV time and got some good. Like he didn't come out and lose, which I thought was nice. Yeah, that happens too often. Yeah, and I I thought his whole thing with Dolph Ziggler, like <clears throat> I was like, okay, why is he out there with with Dolph Ziggler? Like that that's okay. I guess it is Drew McIntyre. And then when he came out again. And did the whole thing with Leo Rush. And the fact that he was helped by Apollo Crews in his match. Yeah. So, like, there's there's some serious babyface team-ups happening on, on Raw now. Because Baron Corbin splitting that roster. Uh, I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to give, <laughs> I'm going to give my like to the Baron Corbin campaign ad. <laughs> uh, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm still, I'm going to keep my love from last week. Because Corbin's general manager stuff has been really good. The last couple of weeks, he's made some, you know, even even just in the middle of the match, like, hey, Chad, I know you're beat down, but now it's a three on two handicap match. You better go out there and help your partner as AOP starts running to the ring. Like, I, I, I think he's making some some fun changes here and there, and he's he's just doing good stuff as a as a heel general manager. And it's you know, it's not that like contrived stuff. It's like, oh, by the way, you know, he's just he's just kind of sticking it to whoever he wants. He's just. He's being an asshole, and it works. Yeah, <clears throat> I just like it's it's okay, but I wish that some of it had more of a means to an end. Like, oh, there there's a lot that he's doing that like is 100 percent just going to revolve around you know where his storyline is going to probably uh you know explode in his face. Right. Uh, but then there's just like so much than like extra stuff that it just seems like I don't know I'm, I'm just I'm not digging it as much mm. because I feel like I'll, there's he's just doing some and it's not really benefiting anybody well I don't think it I, I, I think I think the, the benefit will be the fact that he does all these things and then he loses all that power yeah and I think from a character standpoint everything he's doing makes sense because he said last week that you know you're either on the right side of the history or the wrong side and like sure it seems like he's doing some stuff that's just like i'm a heel so i'm gonna fuck you over but it's also winning over the like allegiance of other heels potentially yeah so i think that's his means to an end is just trying to get as many people on his side as possible yeah 
And and get, kind of giving that false hope, like, hey, Bobby Roode, if you beat Drake, Drake Maverick, you guys get a tag title shot. Oh, by the way. Anyway. Uh, what did you love? <sighs> this will be harder. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was the Lucha House Party, I think. Definitely. The guy who's wearing the Revival shirt loved the Lucha House Party stuff. Well, specifically the beginning of the match when they were getting their asses kicked. Mm. You know, Apollo Crews hucking a Singh brother. Sing brother. <laughs> Beating a motherfucker with another motherfucker. Yeah, and I mean, I, I just didn't expect him to throw him that far. Yeah, he threw him a good, like, three or four feet. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was pretty impressive. impressive. Yeah, so that's a that's a human man who weighs close to two hundred pounds. Yeah, and you're just throwing him like he's a fucking beanbag. That's what Apollo Crews does. You know man. that whole that whole match. Yeah, you know, it was good. I just worry anytime Jinder and Finn are fighting each other because that one time that Jinder knocked Finn out in the middle of a match. Yeah. Um, then he got drafted to SmackDown and became champion. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, God, that did happen. Like, yep. Right. Like, Almost directly afterwards. Jesus. Um, no, I mean... And Finn got put in a short-ass view of... No. He got moved into something else after they started the Bray Wyatt thing. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Finn got demoted for being injury-prone while the guy who hurt him got... The title. ...awarded the title. Yeah. All right. And still the last time ever that the championship changed hands on a pay-per-view. Yeah. For SmackDown. Hmm. All right. What'd you love? I loved just how much of Raw was focused on the women. Yeah, like the fir- the whole like first like the four- half hour, yeah, forty minutes, minutes at yeah. least was all women. Yeah, and then they got the main event. Yeah, yeah, and the uh, the the Bailey uh, tag title shot drop. You yep. know, like hey, we want other titles. Like that was cool. Um, oh boy. What did I love? Um. Shit. Uh. He loved shit. Yep. No. Uh, I loved Elias beating up Bobby Trashley and then getting to bash his, his guitar over Leo Rush with the help of Finn Balor. I, 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 I Finn love. Finn Batman. Finn, ba- yeah. Bat Balor. Uh, I liked all that stuff. The vigilante. Don't. Sting. No. No. Balor. Sting Balor. No. Uh, I, as, you know, anytime Bobby Trashley gets punched or hit in any form or fashion, too bad he crawls so fast, otherwise he would have got hit with a yeah. guitar. Uh, but, you know, being the trash person that he is, he allowed Leo Rush to get like, hit. You, don't, you didn't see it because there was, like, no camera ready to go backstage, but, like, he... He saw like Lashley can like back crawl, yeah, through the entrance. He was like ro- he was like and rolling like, and all kinds of and stuff. And like Elias was like following him, but between the time that it took Lashley to get through the curtain and Elias to also get through the curtain, he was like back in the locker room. Oh yeah, with the door barricaded, with a piano. Sorry, Penta. Penta couldn't take it. So wait, you're saying that he crawled? From I'm like, trying through, to, through Gorilla. I'm trying to down the hallway this. to the locker rooms, stopping to grab a piano on the way. So he crawled with a piano yeah. through the back, Just put it in the was, put it in the locker room, yeah, closed the door on his back as he was crawling. In, oh in, my in, god! In about three quarters of a second. All right. Yeah. Why isn't Lashley better? If he Bobby can do Lashley. all that. Bobby Trashley. Crawling, crawling. Too bad WWE doesn't have a championship for crawling. He would win. Well, there, there's a there's a gold medal of excellence, so it's probably around the corner now. Yeah, why did we get a gold universal championship? Why did we get a gold medal of excellence before we got women's tag team titles? Uh, Answer that, Baron Corbin. Because blame Kurt Angle. He he won. No, never mind. I got nothing. <laughs> uh, the Olympics with a broken freaking neck. Woo! What did you dislike? <laughs> uh, 
Lots of stuff. <laughs> Tell us how much you love Lucha House Party Rules. Uh, For the third week in a row. <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, man... They didn't do this at all but while building Lucha House Party on 205 Live. Yeah, this is a this is a, a Raw exclusive. And it's like... I know you don't watch 205 Live, yeah. but this has never been a thing on 205 Live. Yeah, I kind of figured... And it's like the idea that it's just like, oh, we need something different to get the Lucha guys over, and let's give them this thing. And it's like, what you're eventually going to do is just... And people, like online, it's already happening, is people are like... Wow, this makes the Lucha House Party look like jerks. Yeah. Yep. And, like, why? Because it, it's the one thing that it, it's the one thing that's consistently going against the rest of Monday Night Raw. Because Baron Corbin is favor the heel, favor the heel, favor the heel, all the way across the show, except when you get to Lucha House Party versus the Revival, and all of a sudden the Lucha House Party get to go three-on-one against a member of the Revival. It's Drake Maverick's fault. So... He's pissing on the rule book. Okay. Uh, oh, because he's a part of 205 Live. Yeah. I guess. yeah. There, he's, there's a, he's a 205 Live general manager. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there's the thing where it's like, the only payoff that would make logical sense to this is if the Revival... Would face, yeah, like, or get a third member. Yeah, but this, or, this, you know, at this point, anything that evens the odds is going to receive probably a babyface reaction, unless their third member is somebody who's awful. I'm still gunning for Arn Anderson. Oh, absolutely. I'm. I'm what about you? What'd you dislike? Um, I'm gonna stick in that same realm and just dislike the fact that this third episode of lucha house party obviously ended on the cliffhanger that's going to make it happen again next week yeah yeah the, the, this was by no means the the end of this situation yeah and we can pretty much guarantee that now dash will be in the three on one yeah. handicap match next week yeah and, and leaving little to the imagination and it's and gonna be stupid. the same promo of them coming out like oh you don't respect the rules of wrestling we want a rematch And it just makes the revival look dumb. Yeah. I already said my piece. No, so. That's fair. I was, just, I was waiting for you to add something. Um, all right. Fuck your pinatas. <laughs> um, speaking of disrespecting tag team wrestling. No, don't get me wrong. I like Chad Gable and Bobby Roode. They make a pretty good team. But why, why are they the main focus? I, 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 th this is still this whole, especially on Raw, all of these throw together teams. And granted, the one I'm going to defend is a throw together team. But they've been tag team champions. You break up Slater and Rhino for what reason? But you're going to push all of these makeshift tag teams. At the authors of pain, the it, the tag team division on Raw is so is so much of a clusterfuck that I don't even know how many tag teams they actually have, and the ones that they do have Six. five now because Slater Rounder. Yeah. Okay, who 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 are the who are the five tag teams? All the ones that were on the uh, Survivor Series team and authors of pain. And technically, Lucha House. Well, okay, they, they, they were on the Survivor Series. They were on the Survivor Series. Them, the Revival. I forgot about them because SmackDown won that match. <coughs> six and one. Um, that doesn't count. He said the preacher. Six and one. Um, yeah, I just. The. I mean, SmackDown has great tag teams that they, you know, they use sometimes. <laughs> SmackDown has its own issues with tag teams, but they're at least better. Yeah, yeah. Here's here's my issue with the Raw tag team division is, Authors of Pain won the tag team titles on a fluke in a handicap match, which doesn't make them look like a powerful team. Yeah, despite the fact that they 
You know, like in NXT, they were booked as an uber powerful yeah. team. And uh, to be fair, Seth Rollins like stood a fucking chance against them. Yeah, had Dean Ambrose actually been there, they would have they would have crumbled. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then in the first shot that they had to give AOP a reason to look strong, which they still put AOP over, but they focused on Drake Maverick's penis because yeah, but it was because of like. This beginning to a bizarre storyline. Yeah, essentially, uh, though, yeah, the focus is on Drake Maverick and not the authors of Pain. Yeah. You know, so it took this moment, which should have been, let's make the Raw's tag team champions and give them a reason to look like they are tag team champions, and instead they win because of a distraction. It's like, you know, it's it was like they're, when they first came onto the scene and they uh, started going against uh, Titus O'Neil and Apollo Crews. Where it was like, big dominant tag team comes on, they squash a few teams, and then when it comes to Apollo Crews and Titus O'Neil, the only way Authors of Pain could get over was by cheating. Yeah. Uh, You know, and so we're coming to this thing time after time again, where we have the Authors of Pain who we know can put on a decent match, who we know should be booked as a dominant tag team, for no other, you know, they're big guys, sure, but for no other reason than the fact that they are the tag team champions. Yeah. But they're not booked to look like tag team champions. Yeah. Like, they need to be given handicaps to win against a throw-together tag team. Yeah, and that and that never seemed like the case when they were in NXT. No. They were, they were a legit team that, of course, you know, didn't win all the time, but that's because they were facing other well established tag teams that had good chemistry and found weaknesses. Yeah, well, and the fact that they were, even if they didn't win all the time, the fact that they were as dominant as they were spoke volumes, considering how much more experienced all the other established teams were. Yeah. And they were still able to just run through them because they were just so strong. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're saying is, Raw, get your tag team game... Get your shit together. Yeah. Just get you your whole raw... I know. Get your whole raw shit together. Except with the women's division. Yeah, the women's division that's is working, fine. That's running yeah. smoothly. Yeah. Yeah, like... Except I, for Dana Brooke. Yeah. Dana I mean, Brooke's confused GPS. And I don't really like the whole... Redirecting. Dana Brooke. questionnaire segments or whatever they call them. The open forums, yeah. The, like I could do with less of those, but whatever. Those aren't like terrible. I, I, th- I think the, just... the positive to the open forum is that it is a, it's a hey, here's a reason why this promo is going to yeah. happen. It's not like a oh you're talking shit about me. Yeah. I'm gonna come out and say something to you. It's like hey, here's a situation where Alexa's trying to do this like fan think... interaction thing. And then it's the the personalities involved are backfiring. I on think the I segment. would mind it less if it if we didn't get two weeks of just. Yeah, yeah I I agree. Two weeks in a row was too much. May you know maybe if they had waited this week and like had the tag team match based off the attack last week and then tried it again next week. Yeah. Or if they just thing. like open forum, but Ronda Rousey this week. Yeah, somebody like, different changed it up. Yeah. Good. Yeah. What we're saying is we should write raw. Yeah. But we don't, so... Because we're lazy yep. is actually largely it. Because if we applied ourselves more, we maybe could have ended up there. But we didn't. Instead, we're three assholes talking about assholes. Three assholes and a baby. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click those links down below. There are so many social media links. Uh, there's also a podcast link. That's the link that says SoundCloud. You can get this review and all our regular reviews in podcast form. And there's Reasonable Wrestling Fans. It's Reasonable the W. Like, like wrestling. wrestling. Where we have a list with Kevin Hawk. Sometimes we have a question of the week with Thomas Wolf. We have other videos loosely based around wrestling. We have an entire playlist of unboxing videos. And we have a brand new addition to our punishment playlist. Because we debuted the Wheel of Punishments. And uh, yeah, what a way to start that motherfucker off. Yeah. So go check that out. Brand new video just added a couple days ago. But for now, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. And, uh, you know, in case you forgot, fuck Modus. And Lucha House Party Rules.